Hi everyone, welcome back to another video from uh, Right of Serious on the Pentester Land YouTube channel. Today we are going to talk about uh, one of my favorite vulnerability broken access control and we are going to explore uh, one of three key approaches I use for testing broken access control vulnerability. Sometimes someone asks me uh, why you are trying to find broken access control or broken authentication and uh, you did not try to find XSS or SQLI or another technical vulnerability. Uh, you know, uh, when I am trying to find vulnerability for public company, I and uh, a lot of bug hunters in the world uh, focus on technical vulnerability and uh, I know I cannot spend many time for bug bounty and I am a part-time bug hunter and I have to uh, spend my time on the vulnerabilities which can make uh, more money for me and I can earn uh, more bug bounty with them. All right, and broken access controller is one of them and today I want to share one of my tricks on broken access control. Maybe you read about this on uh, a few articles, but my second and third method are completely private. And when the channel will hit uh, 2K and 5K, I will public my second method and third method. And at the end, I will uh, do an exercise uh, on a private laboratory. Why it's a private laboratory? Because uh, my second and third method uh, are completely private and you cannot read about that on a write-up or a laboratory or anything like that and I have to teach that on uh, and I had uh, to teach these tricks on real target because uh, they could not find any laboratory for them and I will share you in the future all right, before I talk about broken access, uh, my tricks on broken access control, I want to talk about uh, how the application works on authorization function. Uh, I worked on many applications and uh, all of them on these categories, type A and type B. You think all of them use type A, but in some cases uh, we have type B and type B uh, it leads to many money, many vulnerability and I will share you a many write up from my reports uh, on real world and uh, in the future you will understand why type B is so dangerous. When the user type A, when the user is trying to access an object with a specific object ID, like this request, for example, I try to update a book with this ID, the application checks the user is owner of a specific object or not. For example, I use this request and when I change three to two, I receive uh, forbidden or not found because the application check my user objects and uh, see 122 is not for me and back to me uh, 403 or 404 not found. But type B, when the user is trying act to access object with a specific object ID, the application checks the object has a specific owner or not. This is different. Pause the video and think about this. If you thought about my question and uh, understand about type A and type B, can you explain when the developer, when do developer accidentally use a second method for their authorization on their application. You know, I check many applications and uh, I knew um, when the application has a, a more role, uh, not just one role and uh, 
the developer use this trick or sometime the developer use an object ID for a specific object on another object and another function for example uh, the developer use this object on favorite functions or collection function or anything like that the developer use this method too we have to approach for this and this is a uh, it makes my experience and you cannot find this on any book or write -up. all right now we want to talk about our vulnerability let's consider two types of requests at the first uh, you try to creating a new object from book which returns an object id 33 you want to create a book on the book application and you uh, receive uh, this id in the response and on request b you are trying to update that books and updating uh, the same object using the book id 33 when you can uh, send a request with enumeratable number this method for integer number like 33 1 2 3 or another integer number you can use this method i tell you what happens if in the second request at the first you send this and uh, you will receive 200 and you can uh, see everything you changed in the request in the second request you repeat this but not by this number change to this number instead of 33 and again look at the response if the response like the previous request and uh, you can uh, again change the object with this object id it means the application change float number to integer number and convert that and this is the most important part of our attack if you understand about a converting action on the application you can use this method how you can use this method now again change 33 to 34 which this with this and maybe you can receive an idol because the application normally if you change 33 to 34 the application check 34 object id has another owner and uh, you uh, gave a 403 forbidden but when you check 34.001 the application check this id uh, does this id have another owner of course not because uh, this number is not valid this number is not valid but after broken access control check it uh, will convert to 34 and 34 is valid and uh, you can change 34 object id and it's not for you be careful every time on if you are a developer every time you have to uh some changing on your application on your data uh, i wrote a recommendation in here uh, always sanitize and normalize object id before running any business action business logic or security checks for example if you want uh convert float to integer at the first do this convert and after that check broken access control but in the many cases uh, the developer uh, check the vulnerability check user input and after that do action and this is mistake i had in many cases on normalization attack scenario for example i uh, 
did XSS, I found XSS, SSRF, skill injection with normalization scenario. Because the developer or uh, security manager at the first check the input from the user and at, after that uh, do action. And this is mistake. Every time after that uh, convert flow to integer and every time at the first convert flow to integer and after that check broken access control. This is the easy mistake and it helps you to uh, earn more money. Remember for summary of uh, this video, every time when you uh, use up ID in your request, change, uh, for example, 33 to 33.001 uh, or 301. And after that, if you will receive 200 and success response, now again, you can check your either test cases with float number because uh, when you receive uh, true response with this number, it means the application uh, convert float to integer. And of course, you cannot know about uh, at the first check broken access control and after that convert or at the first convert and after that broken access control. And you have to check uh, your tricks and maybe you will find nice vulnerability and uh, i hope you enjoy my video please subscribe and share with your friends and i will see you in the next video thanks for watching me